Within the psychological community, intelligence is most commonly described as an individual's ability to learn, adapt to new situations, and exhibit problem-solving capabilities. According to the Wechsler's Adult Intelligence Scale, there are four subcategories of intelligence. Verbal Comprehension Index, which is a measure of an individual's verbal and communicative abilities. Perceptual Reasoning Index, which dictates an individual's ability to problem-solve and think critically. Working Memory Index, which gauges an individual's ability to remember chunks of information in the short term and Processing Speed Index, which is a measure of an individual's cognitive tempo. The puzzles that you'll be shown in the following moments are sourced from a test of spatial intelligence. The norms created by the test's authors dictate that individuals who are able to solve the following questions within a time frame of 10 minutes have an IQ that is greater or equal to 130 points. These are the questions you must attempt to solve within the next 10 minutes. When you're ready, pause the video, set a timer, and begin developing your solutions. Now that you have finished solving the questions, it's time for you to grade your own performance. While listening to our explanations of the questions, ensure that you make note of how many questions you're able to correctly answer during the 10 minute time frame you are given. At the end of our explanations, you'll be shown a chart that you can use to derive an estimate of your cognitive abilities with respect to perceptual reasoning. The answer to the first question is option D. This is because of the fact that there are two observable rules within the question that must be followed. The first rule is that there must be two copies of each unique shape. As such, the answer to this problem must contain a small square and a large circle. This rule eliminates options B, C, and E from our list of potential answers. The second rule that must be followed is that the sequence of small shapes and the sequence of large shapes must follow a distinct pattern. In the case of the small shapes, the pattern that must be followed is square, circle, blank, circle, square. In the case of the large shapes, the pattern that must be followed is circle, blank, square, square, blank, circle. The only option that can satisfy both of these criteria is option D. The answer to the second question is option C. As you can see in the question, there are two patterns that are followed by each individual item. Firstly, the black and white circles that comprise each item alternate between two orientations. An orientation in which there are four circles on each side and another orientation in which there are five circles on the left side accompanied by three circles on the right. Secondly, the black circles represent a line which continually rotates in a counterclockwise direction throughout the puzzle. During the first iteration of the pattern, the line moves by one circle. During the second iteration, the line moves by two. Thus, between the fourth and fifth items of the pattern, the line must move by two circles. The only option that can satisfy both of these conditions is option C. The answer to the third question is option B. To solve this question, you must identify the relationships between the abstract shapes and the squares. The square, whose left side has been colored black, indicates that the horizontal component of the shape which precedes it must move downwards by one unit. On the other hand, the square whose right side has been colored black indicates that the horizontal component of the preceding shape must move one unit to the left. As such, the horizontal component of the third abstract shape must move downwards by one unit, then one unit to the left to create the shape that completes this series. Option B is this shape. The answer to the fourth question is option C. To solve the fourth question, you must be able to identify the relationship between the bars at the top of the problem and the shapes which are directly below them. Let's begin by considering the first item in the series. The third section of the first bar contains a gray circle, which indicates the color of the eye-shaped figure directly below it. The second item also contains an eye-shaped figure, which is colored black. This corresponds to the black circle which can be found in the third section of the second bar. Using this logic that we've just discovered, we can analyze the second and third items. The second item contains a white square, which corresponds to the white circle in the first position of the second bar. On the other hand, the third item contains a black square, which is associated with the black circle in the first position. Since the first slot of the fourth bar contains a black circle, directly below it should be a figure which contains a black square. This line of reasoning eliminates options A, D, and E from the selection of potential answers. To differentiate between B and C, we must take a look at the gray circle which is contained by the fourth bar. The gray circle can correspond to a gray colored eye shaped figure, since the circle must be in the third position for this to be true, as per the first and second items. Applying this logic allows us to eliminate option B and leaves us with the final answer, option C. The answer to the fifth problem consists of two numbers. The first number is 192 and the second is 10. To identify the reasoning that leads to this answer, let us analyze the first row of items. 
The first and second items of the first row come together to create the third and fourth items. To explain how this combination occurs, we will use a diagram. Let's start by superimposing the first item onto the second item. After the superimposition, we can take this compound item and divide the dots which comprise it according to a 3x3 matrix. The first dot will have a value of 1, the second dot will have a value of 3, the third dot will have a value of 5, you get the idea. To derive the first number, we will multiply the numerical values which correspond to the dots that have not been overlapped. Since 1 by 7 is equal to 7, the first number is 7. To derive the second number, we will multiply the numerical values which correspond to the dots that overlap each other. Since 3 by 5 is equal to 5, the second number is 15. Applying this line of logic to the final row leaves us with an answer consisting of two numbers, 192 and 10. How many questions were you able to answer correctly? Whatever your answer to this question may be, you can use this chart to develop a rough understanding of your perceptual capabilities.